All right, so I've been getting asked uh, uh, frequently about how come I'm only cutting a hind quarter or anything besides that. Uh, show show uh, us how to do stuff all together. I, and I thought I've done some videos like that, but anyway, so here we are. Um, I have basically, I've already taken all the quarters out in the back straps and the tenderloins are floating around here somewhere. I got them in the bag, but uh, I could show that later if we got to. But uh, one of the things too is that tonight I'm gonna go over is showing everybody how to basically debone their whole elk from the quarters. And then I'll probably get into it later, showing how to do the gutless method and everything like that. So uh, let's get started. So one of the things too, is I always tell everybody is you can tell a lot by technique about when people are cutting or doing anything else like that. And when you look at when when we're taking off the hide, you'll see that I will go all the way around and then I'll skin it out. And it shows a lot. So it doesn't look like you're just tearing it up and have fur going everywhere. That's the whole purpose of cutting it around, all the way around. So when I cut it, go all the way around and then go up. So it's the purpose of it so you're not having a whole bunch of hair everywhere and it's not in your meat or anything else like that too. So that's the, the reason why I always tell everybody, look professional, because you don't you don't want to have a haircut and still have all your hair laying all over the place, for example, or anything like that. And so what I'm gonna do is show you guys how to do the front quarter. Now, this is just my opinion, how you do it. There's other ways you can do, but this is just for basically jerky and then doing uh, uh, pepperoni sticks. Uh, this is just going to be trim or anything else like that. So, uh, what I'm going to do is start with the front shoulder. Now, one of the things too is that everything's in seams. So, when you start the front, we're going to start on this seam, the bone right here. We're going to peel it off, take it off, and then take everything else. Now, I have them on an uh, ice chest down here that I'm going to put, be putting all my trim in to make sure that I'm not. Uh, wasting any meat of any sort or anything else like that too. So then I also have my back straps over here that I'm gonna show and then we'll get started on that. Uh, and I'll kind of give you an example of what I'm gonna do with that. So starting with our front shoulder, uh, we'll, start, we'll start right here on the bone and we'll start directly and then run, it, run your knife down. And then you're gonna turn it around and then you're gonna follow the bone and go all the way around on the seam. And you'll see the seam right here. Now, the thing is, is that everybody tells me I gotta slow down, but I don't realize it because I'm that it's, it's second nature for me. So once you go down that seam right here, then you're gonna come right across the joint and then you're gonna pop out right above it like that. So the, uh, once we come down, I always like to bring out the shoulder just to hang it over the edge of the table and then cut alongside the bone. And you're going to see once I start peeling it out, it's going to come off flesh with it. So <clears throat> then we're just going to keep going, turn around, go back over it again, go along with the bone. And Finish it up like that. So now you'll have your your whole front shoulder. That's how you'll take it off. Now to go over uh, here's here's our trim. So there's my bucket down there. Now the other part we're gonna do too is the other side. We'll be starting on this side. So we're gonna run it down and around and then take it off too. Straight down across now I know I know you can't see so I'll, I'll tip it up to show you is that run through peeling it off I'll turn it over so you can see so we're peeling it off on this side too from the front shoulder and that's just our trim so there's our other cut right there now, to me, this is all trim. So 
you possibly can't mess this up. You can hack away at it, do all you want. So, but I always kind of start right here at the end of the ligament and then pop it off right there and just bring it down right here and take that off. Now you can kind of peel that off if you want to, just right here and go around. And then you can do it to the other side too. We'll have the same thing. And bring it off to of that. And then move it back over so I'm not wailing away at it or anything else like that. All right, so we already took that off and then um, we can get this part right here too for our trim. And I find myself starting to cut at it or hack at it, then just stop and then sharpen your knife or take a break. However you want to do this, this is burger, stew meat, something like that. So, and then I'll get back to that later. Pretty much took off everything I need to take off. So now for me, I'm just, these are jerky cuts and I'm not going to get too much into the steaks or anything. So I'll kind of just butterfly it and then we'll stick it right here. And then for the front shoulder, you could do a roast, front shoulder roast but this is jerky. So we'll just butterfly this part right here and then start separating it to make cuts for. Same way with this right here. So these will be our main cuts when we're, when we're doing this, just like that. So now I'll bring over the second one. Now I'm gonna go a little bit quicker. I'm not gonna go too much into detail. I'll just show you everybody how I can do it. side we're getting the other part of it the shoulder flay it off too but it's not really peel it off however you want to say it I never realized one thing I never realized is how critical everybody is on YouTube when I watch the channels of how people cut or anything like that it's just like then I go and look at their YouTube and I I okay this guy's trash and this guy about how he cuts or how he fillets or whatever he's doing. And this dude, he doesn't have no videos, nothing showing like credibility to me. I'm just like, so don't, if you're if you're doing your YouTubes and you're just starting off too, then don't let that discourage you because there's a lot of people that do that. They do that to me all the time. And I was like, mm, whatever. So we're just taking the crabs off. Um, I'm just kind of hacking away at this actually because I'm going to take these in for pepperoni steaks. So I'm gonna, and I will take them into the butcher shop. I don't have time to do this, to smoke these and do these myself. So and that's why I, I, that's why I do this. And everybody will knock you for how much meat you got peeled off or what not like that so whatever you're doing as long as it's legal i guess and you've done your best and that's cool all right so i'm gonna set my other lego crest away so it's not in the way either all right so then now we're gonna break this down actually i want to get this off of there i don't want it on there i want this to go on to get done so it looks a lot more cleaner. Now, once again, we're doing jerky. So these are jerky cuts. So they're all gonna, and this one actually will probably fit in the bag, but I'm not sure. So I cut it in half. I don't wanna guess. I'm trying to shove it in the bag and then. Now, one of the things too, is I get asked a lot is what knives I'm using. 
Now, <clears throat> one of the things is it's a it's a Mercer six inch curved bony knife. Mercer, you better hit me up because I, I'm sponsoring you all the time. So you better like represent me some type of way. Now, these are really sharp. They're really good. They're not expensive. You can catch them on sale for like 11 bucks. Sometimes they're 14 bucks, but it fluctuates all the time. The sharpener I get asked all the time. Smith better hit me up too because I'm always representing both of these two. These go hand in hand. So the one thing is though, is when you're using, you're using your Smith sharpener and you're using your bony knives and you'll see, if you follow me, you'll see that I'm buying these all the time. And then when you use these, you're, you're ripping through your knife. So you'll go for a nice fat blade and all of a sudden you're down to here. So that's one of the, these, this is one of the things too I watch is when people are on guided hunts or they're doing, they're doing anything like that is that they're sharpening over their meat or their kill so i tell everybody make sure you get away from when you're sharpening or anything is that you stay away from where you're cutting which is basically on your leg and to make sure that you're always wiping it off some type of way and now we're going to get into the into our hindquarters so same thing when you're doing hindquarters and you'll notice too is remember be professional about cutting and I don't want to see hair, especially if you're bringing it over to me. I don't want to see all this hair and all this stuff too. So be professional, cut it and then cut it up. Uh, I'll go into another part of that, but here's the hind quarter. Same thing like uh, the front, it's got seams and the one, the, the way that it is, it goes, it starts, you can see the seam goes right here, goes all the way around. Now for the first cut, I'll go really slow for this and then the second one, I'll hurry it up so we're not sitting out here all night. So the first one is you're gonna follow the seam right here. So here's our seam, it goes like right here. Stay a little bit outside of it. So I always you would, I'll always put it in maybe, <clears throat> I don't know, <clears throat> maybe a half an inch or something, the tip of the knife. So when I'm doing it, I'm just putting the tip of the knife, the seam in and just run it down and follow it. If you're not sure to, you can always run it like this. So. I always will put my hand in there, her fingers, and pull the seam out if I'm not sure where it's going. And then pull it apart like that. Now once you do that, you know you're on track. And you're not nicking anything. Sometimes I do that because I'm in a hurry. You'll see it all the time, it's not a big deal. But you'll notice when you are cutting, if you do get really deep into the cut, you'll notice that uh, your steaks will have that cut into it or your jerky in my case. I'm like, ah, oh, I got too crazy on that part. So now, slowly starting to peel it away because that's what you want to do. And you're staying in your seams of anything. And this is a really fatty cow that we're doing. And we'll pull it away, okay? Just like that. And this is junk, so we're gonna get rid of that. Now, we got it all breaking down. So now these parts, I can just cut around. I don't, they're, they're good jerky cuts. We'll sit them here. Uh, get rid of some of our fat. And now you're gonna notice that that once we cut, now you're gonna notice that we're down back down to the bone, the main part of the bone. So if you can see that, I always start kind of in the middle. Does that give you an idea? And once again, you're seeing I'm not sticking the knife in there that far. It's probably the bones probably like that that wide, so I don't wanna go past the bone because then you're gonna start cutting into your round roast. So then I just go right down on there, the bone, go past the knuckle and then cut it off right here. So, and then I'll turn my knife back around and go back up, hit the, the ball joint and then I'm coming back around that too, just like that. And then now you're gonna peel it off and then I always have to slow down because I start picking my pace up and I'm Now, you're gonna see right here is the calf and then here it is, the seam. So we're going on the other side. So you're only sticking your knife in there a little bit and then follow all the way up. Now, once you've done that, you can cut down from the calf. Now what I always do is, say is grab onto the ball joint and then lift it straight up. And see how it falls out, it falls apart. So we know we're, we're okay that cutting a little bit further, deeper on that. 
and then cutting on each side of that. And then, boom. All right. Now, I feel like I'm taking forever explaining this, so I'm just gonna break it down real quick and then I'm gonna get to cutting. And so, here's our round rows. Here is basically my best jerky cuts too that I like. And there's a lot of fat on this, so what I'm gonna do is break it down. Now, uh, and all the seams. So, there we go. And one of the things too is People be like, I want to roast. So what you'll do is take this off. I think it's called the eye. Most of my videos there. This is for our shrimp. So then when you can always peel this off too a little bit. Like that. Get all of that bad off of there. You don't want to be eating on that bad. All right, so here is your roast. Now, one of the things too is that when you're doing, I'm gonna go over this real quick. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time, but when you wanna do steaks, this is another way you can do these steaks. Now, I'll make this, you could go into it, but I'll make it trim. Now, here's my round steak. And then that's what you got. So that's your round steak. And we'll, I'll set it aside. But in this case, it's tricky. So I'm gonna set this aside too later. And then right now, I'm gonna switch back to my other knife and then peel the top part of this off. This is always your trim, but you can break it down into steaks too. So um, let's see. I always wanna take the top of this off, get the fat off of it break it down a little bit more. And then you're gonna see another seam. So boom, take that off. For me, it's tricky. So here it is, here's some more fat. We're gonna peel that off real quick right now. Now you can do your steaks here too, same way. And I always put, I always kind of bend my fingers and then follow them down when I'm doing my steaks and peel them off. But in this case, we're not doing steaks. I mean, we kind of are, but. So here's your steaks for those, but. Make a gift. We're getting jerky, so we're gonna hurry through this video. I feel like I'm running a little bit long and taking my time trying to show everybody. And this is the, we'll take the top of this off right here and the bottom of this. And you can make your steaks that way too. But this is for jerky, so. Now I'm gonna skip over this, uh, la I don't know, should I skip over this last one? I'm not sure. How about I just do this real quick like, uh, and then uh, we'll get into the, the back straps real quick. So I'll do this one a little bit faster. So I know everybody's tension span isn't that long. Mine, mine for sure isn't that long. But we'll do this one a little bit faster. And uh, so we start in the seam. Try not to get my hand in the way. Maybe we should swing it over this way. So we start in the seam. Remember, we're not put, we're not going all the way in there to gouge it out. And if you have problem figuring out where the seam went at the end, then and then peel it out. Take the end of it, of the ball joint, take it out, flip it around, finish it off. Take it off from the joint, and then come back down. Then we're gonna go through the calf, right there, take that off. Now remember, once you get it there, you should be able to lift it up from the ball joint and then cut both sides. Flip it over. I mean, in this case, I have to. It's kind of big trying to manipulate it and whatnot. And then, there you go. That's how you pull it all out. Voila. All right. So, I'm not going to go too much more into this part either. 
and then I can go maybe a little bit. Speed that up for a bit. Over there. We got that cut off. Maybe speed it up a little bit more. So I always like to take this off. Normally this is the part you kind of drag through everything. In this case, we did a pretty good job because it was snow, so it wasn't too bad. And then there's our seam right here. So if you look at it in the round roast, there's a seam right there. Turn it around, put it right here. Here's our round roast. Here's the other part I always like to take off too because so now it's a, what do you call it? Collateral damage almost. If you don't take care of it real good. There's our trim. More trim. There's your round roast, like that. I always like to get that fat off too. Get it off and that's just garbage, so. All right, let's save the roast. All right, now we're gonna get into our back straps. So one of the things I like to do, I haven't drug it through forever is Get all the fat off. And one of the ways too, when you're taking off the sinew or anything else like that, is that I like to take my knife, go through the back part of it, and just run it up. Flip it back there. I do jerky of this too. So if everybody gets a big slab of jerky that looks like that, that's what I've done. I made it jerky. And you're like, holy cow, that's a big piece of meat. What am I doing with it? That's what it is. So there's a bunch of fat. This is actually not even going to be trimmed. This is just... Let's see, the last piece right here. This will be trimmed up. Maybe. I can get it off of there. Okay, so now I've already started. Even It's just that nature. So these are going to be your chops. Your back straps are your chops. So you get a longer knife for you. And this is how you make your chops, your steaks. And I kind of like to make mine a little bit thicker and then thinner sometimes. Just depends on what mood I'm in. But this is how I'll have my steaks tonight. We're gonna vacuum pack these. I don't need to go to a butcher for anything really. Set my trim, my pepperonics. I just don't have time to do that. It's a long process and I'm still learning. I always like to try to make one full cut or else when you look at it, it Almost, that one's a big fat one. That uh, still looks good. And then right down to the last part. And then here's the last one. So that's what we'll, we'll, it will look like when you do your chops. So uh, without going into too much more time or anything like that to make this a long video here's some tips when you guys are cutting that you can do if you guys want anything else done that i can show you or help you with let me know because i'll be more than glad to do that other than that happy cutting